Welcome to tonight's lesson. It's another lesson on revision strategies, but tonight we're going to talk about some revision strategies for another aspect of a key quality of the trade of ideas. If you look at the key qualities in the yellow box on the first slide, you'll see that I've listed finding a topic, and that's something we've already looked at. That was what we did in our writer's notebook before we flipped the classroom. The last two videos you watched were two strategies apiece on how to focus your topic. Once you found your territory or what you're interested in, how do you narrow it into a smaller idea? How do you find one small part of a big broad idea? Tonight's video we're going to shift to a third area that's important in the trade of ideas and that's developing your small idea once you found it. The focus of this aspect of ideas is to find details to develop your idea that are chock full of interesting information. To find details that show new thinking about your idea. That give your readers something that perhaps they haven't read before. Once you have found one small part of your big topic to focus on, then you're ready to develop that one small part. Developing your idea is a lot like a garden. You choose the seeds, you plant them, but you end up with a lot more weeds coming up out of the ground than every bean plant or, or sunflower that you've planted. And nonfiction is no different. You may find after researching that you have pages and pages of dead-end facts that everybody knows. And you really don't have ideas that you need to make your paragraph or your paper stand out. These are the ideas that you need to uncover or to dig more deeply for. And tonight's strategies are going to show you ways of digging more deeply. When we talk about developing your one small idea, what we're really talking about is uncovering what's lying deep underneath all the usual stuff, trying to explore, to think about your idea in a more complex way and a more original way. It's very important that you've really fully developed your ideas before you decide the one main point you want to make. It's much easier to work with a lot than to come up with an idea and try and fill it up. So your goal as a writer of good nonfiction is to dig for new insights. Your ambition or your goal is when your reader is done with your paper, they leave with something new to think about that they wouldn't have gotten from any place but your paper. The first strategy I'm going to think about is sort of working in your notebook or drafting on notebook paper to push yourself to go beyond the ordinary and dig deeply to keep asking yourself, what can I say that's surprising or different from what everybody else might say about my topic? So you, your goal in this first strategy is to move beyond your first thought and go more deeply to dig and find something different that's going to leave a lasting impression on your reader. You want to go beyond that initial idea and you want to keep an end goal in mind when you do this kind of work on your thoughts. You want to keep asking yourself, what do I think about this idea that can be different from what everybody else might say. This is the goal of your very first strategy for developing your little idea. As an example, I was looking through my notebook getting ready to teach this lesson and I decided I would start with this sentence. I love the beach. It's a place I can think. Okay, you know what? That's really not great. That's kind of an ordinary idea. Any of you would have said that. I need to try and think about being at the beach. Can I think of something different? It gives me a place to think. Okay. As I walk 
along the rack line. And the rack line is kind of like the high tide mark. Searching for treasure. I think about the stories the sea tells us about herself. by the gifts that she leaves us. Okay, I think I'm on to something here. All right, I don't wanna just talk about shells. I pick up this kind of a shell and I pick up that kind of shell because everybody talks like that. So what else can I, okay, she tells us about herself with the gifts. So what are some odd things, okay. Did that piece of sea glass come from a sailing ship full of new settlers 200 years ago? How deep was this float off a fishing net? If you look at this, I've gone from, I love the beach, it's a place I can think, and I actually found myself digging about what kinds of things could I think about that other people wouldn't think of. And I got into this whole idea about the sea telling us stories about herself and her life by the gifts that she strews on the beach. I'm going to pursue this a little further in my notebook tonight when I finish taping this. But for now, this is a pretty good example of this kind of thinking. I don't think anybody else would think about the rack line being the story that the sea has written on the beach for us to read. And that's different. I think I'm going to pursue that. All right, a second way of trying to dig more deeply, trying to develop beyond the common ideas, is to have a conversation with yourself on paper. Instead of the goal of asking yourself, is this what everybody else would say? You're going to kind of engage yourself in a conversation that forces you to go more deeply into your thoughts. If you think about any kind of a very strong discussion you have with someone about something, you find yourself saying things like, well, that makes me think that, or, but wait, on the other hand, or, you know what I used to think, but now, thinking about it, I realize, well, writers do the same thing on paper. They kind of have a conversation between themselves and their mind, and it kind of helps them dig more deeply. It's important to stay focused on that one idea, because the longer you can stay with that one idea, the more likely you're going to be to dig deeper and deeper until you find the treasure of something unusual and interesting, something that's going to engage your reader from beginning to end. It's kind of like digging for clams. If you've ever dug for clams, if you just stand and look on the beach, you really don't see anything. But then if you push yourself to look a little more closely, you notice little bubbles. Well, okay, it's little bubbles. But then if you look a little more closely, you think you see something kind of sticking up out of the holes where the bubbles are. And if you dig a little more deeply, if you actually dig, you find yourself uncovering bucketfuls of yummy clams that you can take back and steam. And that's exactly what you're doing in your notebook. By having a conversation on the paper, you're trying to dig for the clams 
rather than just stay on the top of the surface of the sand. I'd like you to pause the video and please copy these phrases into your ISN. There's some prompts that when you're writing and you run out of steam, you can begin a sentence, I think this because, I think that Mother of the Sea is telling us a story in the rack line because I see your handwriting in the seashore that's draped around washed up bottles, pieces of, of driftwood, pieces of fisherman's net, and pieces of logs that have tumbled and tumbled in the waves. So that each one of these is going to push you to dig a little deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Let me show you an example of this from a student writing. This is about three years old. It came from a student's notebook. And I do have her permission to use it as long as I don't disclose her name. But I want you to look at how she started with a really common phrase. The phrase she started with was, My best friend is important to me. She is kind and caring. That was what she first turned into me. And I sat down with her and I said, You know what? This is what everyone would say about their best friend. What is special about you and your best friend? And she didn't know. So I sent her back to her desk with the strategy to have a conversation on paper. And look where it took her. Remember that this is the small idea she started with. She's kind and caring. She always makes time for me. And then she went into one of the starters that I asked you to put in your notebook. And she picked, this makes me think. And she wanted to see, what does her kindness make me think of? Well, she's really generous with her time. So, so what? Why is this generosity important to me? She makes me realize I want to be generous too. Here's another starter. I used to feel bad about not being more generous, but now I try and act in ways that I admire about her. This makes me realize there's another one of those stems, and now we're getting to the clams. Now we're getting to the big ideas. My best friend shows me the kind of person I want to be. Oftentimes, when I want to work on how I act, I think about my best friend and how she would act. I use her as a model. I went from, she went from, my best friend is important to me, to my best friend shows me the kind of a person I want to be. That's a clam. That's a thought that not everybody is going to think of when they talk about their best friend. Today's video has moved from focusing your idea to taking that one small piece and ways to dig more deeply so that you can find those interesting details that make the idea yours. If you've already tried the strategies and feel like you have a pretty good handle on what your small idea is, then maybe today's strategies of digging in are going to be possibilities for your work plan tomorrow. Please remember, and this is an important reminder, please remember that your first nonfiction finished draft is due in about two weeks, the week of February 25th. The expectation for this finished draft is that the paper has been through the full writing process. Now this is different than your memoir. Your memoir was just a rough draft. This time I expect you to have done the pre-writing, which we've done a lot of work with, to have drafted it, which was also homework, to have gone through the revision strategies, which we've talked about now for three nights, to actually, once you've done all the revising you to do, to confer with someone so they can look at the paper and tell you what it really says. Perhaps you might need to go back and revise and confer. This is sort of a cycle until you get it right. And then finally, editing. Please notice that editing is last. And remember, anybody can edit your paper. It's probably the least important thing you do as a writer. A secretary could edit your paper, but only you can revise it because you're the only one that has the vision in your head. Please remember that tonight there is a change in, your, in the format of your WSQ. The W 